Hello friends, I welcome you all in this new edition of news coverage from the Hindu newspaper dated 25th January 2019. So what all are we going to cover is detailed here. By the way, today is National Voters Day. You should remember this point. So you can stop the video and uh, note down the art, uh, articles that we are going to cover. So let's start with the article. The first article is 18 institution, Indian institution to study nitrogen pollution. This is the first of its kind. 18 research institutions in India are among the group of 50 institutions called South Asian Nitrogen Hub (SANH) in the United Kingdom and South Asia that have secured 20 million million pound that is about 200 crores from UK government to assess and study quantum and impact of nitrogen pollution in South Asia. While nitrogen is the dominant gas in atmosphere, it is inert and does not react. However, when it is released as a part of compound from agriculture or sewage or biological waste, nitrogen is considered reactive and this may pollute and even exert a potent greenhouse gas. So far, we have focused on carbon dioxide and its impact on global warming. Nitrous oxide that is N2O is 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide but isn't as prevalent in atmosphere. However, this is poised to grow and how? A consortium of researchers and who assess the trend in nitrogen emission in India where NOx emission grew from 52% in 1991 to 59, 52% from 1991 to 2001 and 69 percent from 2001 to 2011. The SANH, this uh, institute that is South Asian Nitrogen Hub will study the impact of the different form of pollution to form a coherent picture of the nitrogen cycle. In particular, it will look into the nitrogen in agriculture in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Africa, uh, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, Bhutan and Maldives. So we go to the next article, ISRO test first success in 2019. We have talked a lot about this particular mission in yesterday's uh, video, but still a couple of things can be revised here. The fourth stage used to just become yet another piece of space debris. However, ISRO has found a way to make it useful stage with a student satellite called Kalamsat made by Space Kids India weighing just 1.26 kg attached to it. Now earlier the the way I had uh, told you earlier also that fourth stage used to be used to become a debris but now lithium ion battery is uh, attached to it that will keep it operational in its space uh, uh, <clears throat> in the in the space and because of that uh, small satellites or experiments could be conducted on it. So that's what it is written here. Another you know, innovation is making the fourth stage as an experimental platform to the technology demonstration and carry out scientific experiment by the student. The fourth stage of the rocket may be orbiting in this space for six to six months to a year. And how? Because of this lithium ion battery would be able to supply the power. And in the uh, future course of action, in, in subsequent uh, flights, maybe fourth stage would be attached with solar panel so that these uh, fourth stage could act as a platform to orbit in their uh, designated orbital. Now, ISRO is aiming to use this time frame to enable agencies to run short time experiment the way I have mentioned right now. ISRO is also developing a small satellite launch vehicle SSLV smaller than the PSLV. The first SSLV will be uh, launch will take place this year itself. So then we will discuss about that when it happens. Now the next article is about that rat hole mining in Meghalaya. So it says that this the tone of the article is that the moment this tragedy happened the, the authorities had already assumed that they would not be able to save them and how let us see what they are saying. Meghalaya government has no idea what happens inside the, these rat hole mines which are barely 2 feet wide 
since mining is a private activity and how we will we'll talk about it. Despite the National Green Tribunal's ban in of 2014 and uh, it had upheld it in 2015, mining continued in the state. Why couldn't be saved? Because despite administration, district administration assumed that the miner, the miners to be dead on the very day of the tragedy. Because when a mine is flooded, the immediate response apart from pumping the water is to stop further flow of water into it. And this requires a hydrologist to scientifically, to scientifically map the area where and uh, to see from where the water is coming into the mine. A Sudhir Kumar, a hydrologist from the National Institute of Hydrology, Roorkee, arrived only two weeks after the disaster. So did the divers from Indian Navy and a 100 HP, that is horsepower, water pump from Kirloskar Brothers. So these, these factors actually indicate that administration was already sure that miners are dead and they cannot be uh, evacuated. Now, the remotely operated underwater vehicle from place in uh, Chennai came three weeks later and this shows the lackluster approach of the administration. So did the geologist from Hyderabad. So all these delays happened because there was no one person or agency to coordinate the rescue mission. And this shows the kind of disaster preparedness that we have in our country. This is the point that this article is making. So before we go further into this article, let's quickly talk about what is rat hole mining. Is the, uh, is, is the right time to understand and uh, uh, know about rat hole mining. This picture actually depicts the rat hole mine here, which actually looks like a rat hole. This one. So what is rat hole mining? It involves digging of a very small tunnel, usually only 3 to 4 feet high in which workers, often children, enters and extract coal. The rat hole mining is broadly of two types, side cutting and box cutting. The picture that I have I had showed, uh, showed you is a side cutting. In side cutting procedure, narrow tunnels are dug on the hill slope and workers go inside until they find the coal seam. The coal seam in hills of Meghalaya is very thin, less than 2 meters in most cases. In the box type of cutting, the, a rectangular opening is made varying from 10 to 100 square meter and through this a vertical pit of 100 to 400 feet deep is dug and that's what had happened in this particular case. Once the coal seam is found, rat hole size tunnel are dug horizontally through, the, through which the workers can extract the coal. So this one is the box type cutting from here miners go inside and once they find the uh, coal seam, they start horizontal cutting. Now why it is prevalent? Unlike Jharkhand, the, where the coal layer is extremely thick, open ca cast mining can be done. But in Meghalaya, the, cold, uh, the coal uh, seam is very uh, thin or almost like 2, two meters. So though no other method can be economically viable in Meghalaya where the coal seams are extremely thin, uh, extremely thin, maximum around 2 meters. So removal of rock from hilly terrain and putting up a pillar inside the mine to prevent collapse actually would become costlier and economically unviable. So despite a ban, rat hole mining remains the prevalent procedure of coal mining in Meghalaya. So rat hole mining is locally developed technique and most commonly used one. It is not regular regulated by law and coal extracted extraction has been made by unscrupulous element in the most illegal and unscientific manner. Meghalaya's annual coal production is of nearly 6 million tons and it, it, is, it is said that it is mostly out of this rat hole mining. Now, what's, what are the impacts? The first impact is on ecology and how the rat hole mining in Meghalaya has caused water of Kopili river and there are a couple of more to turn acidic and how it has happened exposed rock containing the sulfur bearing mineral called pyrite react with which react with air and water to form sulfuric acid and that makes the water acidic 
Entire roadside in and around mining area are used for piling up the coal and this is getting to be the major source of air, water and soil pollution. And there is of course a risk of life the way it has happened in this particular case. Due to rat hole mining during the rainy season, water flows into the mining area resulting in death of many. Now what are the shortcomings? The first thing is that the National Green Tribunal had banned the rat hole mining in 2014 and retained the ban in 2015. The NGT order banned not only rat, rat, uh, rat hole mining but all kind of unscientific and illegal mining. But the order of the tribunal have been violated without exception. The state government has failed to check the illegal mining effectively. It has also not framed any mining policy, mining plan and guidelines. The state has in place the Meghalaya mines and mineral policy, but the NGT has find it completely inadequate. Now, what, what, what people say there or the miners say there that they have a protection from constitution 6 schedule. Constitution 6 schedule intend to protect the, uh, protect the con uh, community, uh, intend to protect the community's ownership over its land and autonomy and consent over its natural use. But the coal mining currently underway in Meghalaya was a corruption of this constitutional provision because it is also flaunting Article 21 of Fundamental Right that talks about right to life and dignity. Private individual with interest in earning monetary benefit from minerals wasted under the land are engaging in coal mining. So they are attempting to legalize this act by claiming immunity through tribal autonomy over land ownership but they but basically they are land mafia I mean uh, coal mafia. Now, now we come back to the article the author asks couple of questions few un un unanswered questions and what are those why does the state allow this archaic mining system which has complete disregard to human life and safety. That is the first question this author is asking. And second, it is saying that why is Meghalaya exempted from national mining law? Rat hole mining, which started in Gusto in 1980, has poisoned three rivers in Jayantia Hills. The Maitrudu, Lunar and Lukha. Scientists from the national uh, from the Northeastern Hill University have found that these rivers have very high acidic level. Acid mine drainage from the abandoned mine was a major cause of water pollution in these areas. And because of this, the author is saying that Meghalaya must be under national mining law. Now, what are the argument of the miner? The way I said, rat hole mining should continue because no other form of mining is viable. So basically they are saying that if they start uh, applying uh, safety measures, they would lose money and that would not be profitable for them. What they are saying that coal mining provides livelihood for many. Further they are saying that coal mine, uh, that Meghalaya is a state under sixth schedule of the constitution and national mining law should be exempted here. Now I have detail about this. Sixth schedule was enacted to protect the community right of tribals from any form of exploitation of their land and resources. But unfortunately, here is the exploitation and that too of extreme form. So the author is say saying, how can it now be used as an instrument to protect activity that is a private enterprise and that is in inhuman and that actually is violating Article 21 of the constitution. Now, the question of the author is that at one, uh, in one scenario, a big cement company called Lafaz was actually fined heavily by Supreme Court because of the uh, pollution that it was causing. Why these people are left un, uh, untapped or uh, uh, no restriction is imposed on them. So this, is, this was about this particular article. Now we move to the next article and that is Seasons Wars. It is talking about H1N1 and other kind of uh, influenza. The point of co contention is that the concerted public health push is required to tackle periodic outbreak of influenza. Now it start with the 
situation the current situation is quite grim and it the the author says that there have been peaks in the country over past 6 years with the numbers of number of cases recorded by the integrated disease surveillance program soaring to 42592 and the death toll touching 2919 2015 now the author is saying that what all is required first thing that he is uh, talking that with better understanding of the nature of activity uh, active viruses and availability of the quadrivalent vaccine state government have actually no excuse for failing to sharply reduce the spread and how and he is saying that large scale vaccination covering high risk groups such as health workers people with lung kidney liver and heart disease diabetes and Ill, Ill elderly could actually reduce the impact of the viruses in the state such as rajasthan maharashtra gujarat telangana and national capital region all of which had a large number of cases in last three years a universal preventive program should be considered at least for the future further it says that last year union health minister put out an advisory on the right vaccine to protect against the a known set of virus such as influenza a h1n1 h3 and n2 and influenza b yet most public health program are not prepared for a mass adoption of the vaccine an umbrella scheme such as ayushman bharat can easily provide it to everyone using public and private institution and the author is wondering as why it is not been done further the author is saying that upgrading existing vaccines require a consistent effort to track the viral mutation this is important that takes place periodically and communicate the information to the researchers through an through an open access database and that way they would be able to prepare better vaccine or rather vaccines could be upgraded because once you track their mutation you would be able to track the flow in their system and that way vaccination uh, development of the new vaccine could be could become effective there are 41 viruses this article says there are 41 virus research diagnostic laboratories in india and they can study the nature of infection to provide genetic insight to peer scientists and this can help develop vaccine and remedies so first thing is that you track the mutation and since you have 41 virus research diagnostic laboratory in india if this process is tracked then after due consultation within these 41 research institute a better vaccine could be developed and better remedies could be suggested now we move to the next article that is on page 14 and that is sri lankan farmer battle powerful warm the only important point here is that sri lanka's maize farmer are now battling a tiny but powerful enemy and that is called the fall army warm according to agriculture and agriculture department the fall army worm from the moth species and known by scientific name as spodoptera frugiperda quite complicated is said to have come from india so this is important point here fall army worm and its name biological name and that sri lanka is battling right now so th this was the news from today's newspaper i would not be uploading any uh, news analysis for, uh, for, uh, for tomorrow now i'll be available maybe on monday or on tuesday that is 28th of january thank you